We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all united. Hello, everybody here in, at the room. Thank you very much for attending this session. We are waiting for the uh, person responsible here in Mexico uh, about the um, presentation of the National Institute for uh, Information Access there. Um, in, in the meantime, I, I would like to ask the audience if uh, you if you have a specific interest to be addressed during during this session here in place in Katowice or uh, wherever you are uh, right now um, joining us here. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, I'm Adrian, I am in you, can you introduce this session in the meantime or um uh, or or can we can we give the audience the opportunity to talk because we only have 14 minutes left. Uh, we have uh, can, can we have access to the um, can, can we have access to to the chat please okay uh, it's a pleasure okay mauricio hernandez yes uh, hi mauricio uh, well, I, I I hope. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, is is there somebody else from the audience who who has uh, something to share with us, uh, taking advantage of this um, spot that were allocated for the Mexican Association? Yes. Thanks so much. Hi, everybody. I'm Benjamin Chong from Mexico. Uh, this year I uh, attend this uh, forum because I was part of the uh, Youth Summit on Zero Day. And I was the coordinator about privacy and data protection group. So it's so important in, in this time to talk about the importance of, of, of the data because uh, with, with the pandemic, there are many, many data that are not protected. Uh, for example, uh, we talked with, with, uh, uh, with him about, about that, about uh, health information data. There are many, uh, many information that, that, that we need to, to protect. And the Institute of, of Mexico about data protection uh, try to, to, to promote many, many rights as uh, access, rectification, can cancellation, and opposition. Uh, but we need to, to understand that the importance about data, we need to observe what happened with the, for example, a future of technologies with the, with the multiverse. So uh, that's why I, I'm here, because I, I hope uh, to learn something more about, about, about the importance of, of, of data or, or about a specific uh, thing of, of data. I don't know if, if, if someone want to, to introduce uh, what happened in, in your countries about uh, data protection. Who want to, uh, to, to participate? Hear from, from the audience, are, are you from which country? Iran. And what about you, sir? Belarus. Okay. Um, yes, in, in Mexico, we have a national institution which is dedicated to the protection of this data. It's called INAI. And uh, of course, we, we have developed some standards in terms of uh, how to uh, 
to manage open data for the Mexican people uh, according to the European standards. And we are already certified on their, on their this um, organization, on the disagreement in Brussels. And it's the first country, Latin America, who, who, who already got the, who already got this uh, qualification. Uh, and, and certainly we, we, we are looking forward how to collaborate in terms of uh, exchanging experiences with another countries uh, related on uh, how to, to handle the, this private data. A, which which relies on the, the responsibility of the uh, citizen and also uh, for under the perspective of the protection for this data which when it uh, becomes to be part of the uh, information systems from the different institutions um is there um is, is there another participation from the from the people who are already joining us at the uh, online. Uh, okay. It, um, Maybe you... it's important to mention, this is Mauricio Hernandez from Mexico, that the uh, Institute Thanks. of Transparency it has also um, launched the second version of a huge national platform for transparency that it's now enriched by the right citizens have in order to promote the defense of the personal information. This means that before public entities, we are not only allowed to ask for public information that it's in our duty to, to be provided with, but also to have a right to counsel, um, uh, ask uh, to amend, modify, or, or to access only, to the information, personal information, each public entity, each public body has. And this is uh, relevant because considering health information is um, talking about Ms. Ms. Mr. Chan, uh, it's important to let know that right now we are in a very important moment while information, uh, health information and uh, biometrics data is in the center of many industries considering the effects of the pandemic has uh, uh, provide has uh, has uh, developing all worldwide. Mexico is one of the Latin American countries that has this kind of platform, and I think that it's time for for public uh, entities to promote this defense not only to transparency but also to to the balance between privacy and defense of human rights in the sense of uh, of privacy and direct access. Thank you. Yeah, great, great, great comment, and and certainly uh, the this this work has been the result of uh, many people involved into this initiative. And our country is very keen in terms of how to to get to this level of transparency for public services as well for the proper citizens uh, as such. Uh, another participation from the audience in uh, online, please. Well, in addition that that, that you say the, the importance of, of the of the institute is uh, are regulated on the on the constitution and and the constitution uh, give uh, to the institute the the, the force the, the power to to protect the the data and i think it's important to to mention that one of the challenge uh, in 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 mexico and i think in in other, in another countries is the the right to be forgotten uh, i think mauricio uh, mentioned that uh, uh, about that about the the cancellation right so it's important to uh, uh, look look the the way to 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 protect this this right to to, to be forgotten Yes, yes. Ar Arco is also part of the uh, main core of the regulation, and and certainly the the opt out possibility for the citizen to to be um, deleted in terms of, of the content in the specific databases is it's of course a, a right in in Mexico. And uh, at the, I am a representative for from the. Mexican uh, IT Association, 
which is also strongly committed with uh, companies pro who are uh, technology providers and as well with the society in terms of how to take care of all these kind of uh, issues in handling privacy at the highest level of uh, importance. Of course, uh, cybersecurity, encryptation of data, uh, protection of, uh, of, this, uh, of, of this data, it's something that uh, at the association, it's uh, currently, uh, uh, currently reviewed in, in try to, to keep the best standards up to date uh, for for the industry as well as for the users. Um, I, another comment from our colleagues from Iran uh, or from from Belarus. Do, do you have something to share with us? Will Will you be so kind to introduce yourself and make a comment? Thanks. Okay. Uh, I am Hatif Rasuli, uh, CEO of a, a company which is consult, uh, consulting government in Iran in the field of cybersecurity and identity management. Um, I think something should be clear uh, precisely. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, what's the exact uh, meaning of the data governance? As you told and uh, explained, it uh, seems that the definition of data governance is equal to data protection and privacy. But I think it's, it has a, the data governance has a broader meaning and has different layers and in strategic layers, which uh, means how to plan and program the, uh, the data in national level. And the second layer, we have uh, uh, manage, managerial processes, which deals with uh, uh, managing the life cycle of the data. And the second layer is the te technical, tactical or technological level, which deals with the processes uh, in the uh, infrastructure, hardware, software, and other aspects that deals with how to uh, implement the processes which is defined for data governance. I think the holistic view is needed to uh, explain about the data governance. And this is important because uh, it identifies the viewpoints and the importance of the governance or sovereignty of the data actually, it should be mentioned. And another thing that what's the difference between data governance and data sovereignty in a national level. In, uh, we are interested in uh, to understand about the data sovereignty uh, strategy of the Mexico, if possible, please explain. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I, I don't know if Mauricio uh, has to, uh, wants to say something, if it is not the case. Um, I, my comment is, um, th there is, there is a, th there are two different bodies in, in Mexico working in this direction. One is uh, something which is called a, a specific union, a unit for uh, all the inform official or state information systems, which is in charge of the regulation for, from the uh, different uh, international standards for interoperability, as well as uh, how to uh, have this governance map uh, or data governance map in terms of each one of the official units at the federal government. Uh, the same model is replicated in each of the uh, 32 states, Mexico's, and they are responsible for, these units are responsible for the uh, specifically data, data governance, in, uh, governance in terms of uh, which data should be 
uh, place as open data, which data is classified as a sensitive data for uh, different purposes according to the, the law, the transparency law, and also uh, how to protect this uh, infrastructure and, and this data and, and so on. Uh, regarding the, the data sovereignty, uh, we, we do have, of course, international agreements with different organizations. And, and certainly we do have to exchange information, for example, for these pandemics with WHO. And, and th this is something already signed and, and said, and, and we do have to, to deliver sp specific uh, population data and, uh, for, for statistical purposes or for um, public health purposes. That's, that's also clear. And, and certainly with all, uh, with, with all those uh, regulations in terms of uh, which kind of data can be exchanged or shared or, or, uh, or should be protected in a specific way. And each organization, each official organization from the federal government has a uh, IT department which is uh, responsible to apply the different policies from the uh, national uh, digital agenda, as well as for the uh, regulations from this uh, digital government unit who, who has the uh, framework on uh, which um, terms have to be complied from, from a uh, government organization in order to uh, have a system uh, approved, uh, deployed in, uh, in production or, or online. And certainly we, we do differentiate that. And on top of that, this transparency uh, initiative uh, it's not only about how to handle the open data, but also how to provide access to the final user to this data, uh, which uh, till recently it was a little bit challenging for the citizen. And he, they uh, sometimes the citizen had to to go to the uh, tribunals to to ask for for a. Uh, official requirement to get the, uh, the data. And nowadays it's not necessary anymore. And that's what uh, Mr. Mauricio Hernandez was trying to, to mention at this point. Uh, well, the, the time is already, it's already gone. We can stay here and for the discuss, but for the uh, purpose of the organizing committee, we thank everybody for joining this session. And I hope we can keep in touch to follow up with uh, our initiatives. Thank you very much to everybody. My name is Amado Espinosa and I appreciate uh, everybody uh, to, be, to be here, Benjamin Chong and all the participants here on site. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.